made a bit of progress today with my 6502 breadboard computer, although it has been really odd, some of the things that have happened. I'll explain some of those in a moment. But I've got to the point where I've made a kind of monitor program. It's really simple. All it does is shows the contents of the ROM. So basically, it's just a program that displays its own contents on a display. And there are lots of limitations with it. It's really, really inefficiently coded. But I'm finding it much easier to learn assembly language by doing... Uh, it's like learning to cook, uh, taking somebody else's recipe, uh, cooking it, trying it, modifying it. That's the way uh, I like to learn to code with practical examples uh, rather than learning every concept um, in order from first principles and going through uh, every function, every instruction. So um, I've tried to do this. I'm blundering around in the dark. Don't know what I'm doing, but I ha do seem to have got this to work. So on the LCD display at the moment, you can see uh, an address displayed in memory. That's the first address of the ROM. And when I press this button here, that causes an interrupt on the processor. Um, and it will display, it will increment the counter and it will display the content in the next memory location. Now, it doesn't work for properly for 8000, but you do see a strange symbol. And that is an ASCII representation of the contents of that address in memory. That is a true representation. However, when I press the button, you'll see now uh, address 8001, or rather 8001, because that's a hexadecimal address. We've got FF, and that means that that memory address contains FF, which it does. If you have a look at the um, dump, the hex dump of the ROM, that's what's in there, and the ASCII representation of it next to it. And if I keep cycling through, you'll see as we go through, um, it is counting up the address and showing the contents of each memory location, its ASCII representation next to it. Um, the ASCII representation doesn't really mean very much until you get to the part of the program that actually prints some text on the screen. But because the code is so inefficient, I have to scroll quite a long way through before I get to uh, the part of the program that prints a splash screen on the screen. Uh, for reasons of debugging that I don't quite understand, um, I've had to dispense with the splash screen, so it doesn't actually appear, but it is still in the code, and so it's still in the ROM. Um, if we go through, we must be getting there soon. I think we're getting fairly close to where it is in memory. If we go through here, it's 080 something. Here we go, uh, address 8084, we can see it contains 4D in hex, which is the letter M, and then I-C-R-O-N, 1, Micron 1 is the name of my computer. And if you keep going, scrolling a bit further through, you should get to the second line of the splash screen, which has got blog my wiki on it, which is my Twitter handle, and that seems to work. Um, it is really limited. I can only go through 256 uh, memory addresses because I haven't worked out how to um, offset loading a memory address uh, using more than one byte. Um, I'm using the X register as an offset to read the memory location. That seems to be doing some kind of weird stuff. Um, anyway, let's have a look at the code. There's one bit that I'm quite proud of, and that's the bit that converts a byte to a two character hexadecimal number on the screen. So let's have a look at how that works. When you push a button, it does an interrupt uh, via the VIA chip and tells the processor to stop what it's doing and do some execute some other code that follows the IRQ flag here. And what it does is when you push the button, it clears the display. Um, I've hard coded in displaying the first bit of the memory address 80 because I'm only dealing with one byte addresses at the moment. Haven't worked out how to do two byte addressing yet. Um, that's a bit beyond me at the moment. Uh, this is the bit I'm quite pleased with, though. This is the bit that actually um, reads the address uh, and converts a uh, a byte into a two-character hexadecimal um, number in ASCII to display on the on the display. Uh, it does this several times. It's really inefficient. Uh, it needs to go in a subroutine, but there are all sorts of issues I need to solve around X registers and what's in the accumulator and the stack and getting everything muddled up. It's sort of stuff that you really have to plan and think really carefully when you're doing assembly language programming. <laughs> you just uh, don't, don't realise you're spoilt when you're doing, using high-level languages. You don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff it's taken care of for you. Um, but just to go through this very quickly, what this does is the X register I'm using to store the offset of the address that I'm looking at at any given time. Uh, so TXA loads the contents of the X register into the A register, into the accumulator. I'm then doing an AND operation because I'm, um, I need to split 
uh, the bite into two halves, into two nibbles. I need to look at the high half first to get the first digit of the hex number. Uh, and then I need to look at the second half. So I'm only going to look at the first half. Uh, I then need to process it. And to process it, I need to shift it along. So I'm going to rotate it right four times to move whatever's left in that half of the number along four digits to the right. Uh, so I can process it. And I get left with a number. Um, let's say we've got F in there, for example. Uh, it does a comparison. It compares it with the number 10 in decimal. Is it bigger than 10? Um, if it is not bigger than 10, it jumps down here, jumps to this part of the program and adds an offset to it. Now, this is an offset in the ASCII table. So it adds basically three zero in hex to it. That's the correct offset so that the value will be the correct value in ASCII to print it on the screen because helpfully uh, in the ASCII code table, all the numbers are in numerical order, obviously. So if you work out what the offset is, uh, you can turn the number zero into th three zero in hex, and that will be the right character code to print a zero on the display. Uh, we need to do the same for letters, though. If it's not less than 10, that means we've got a number like A, B, C, D. So 10, 11, 12, 13 in decimal. And we need to print those as letters of the alphabet. So we just do that by adding a different number. Instead of adding the offset for numbers, we add a different number to go to a different part of the ASCII table. Now, this is a bit that really puzzles me. I don't know why. I'm, I seem to have to add 3.6 in uh, X to it. I think I should be adding 4.1. Um, can't work out why it's 3.6. Something very weird is going on. But anyway, it seems to work. So that's what it does. Um, and if it's printed the letter, um, a letter rather than a number, it then doesn't need to add the offset for number. So it jumps over that, scoots down here and prints the character. Now that's done the first um, digit. So imagine we've got FF stored uh, in this location. It's done the first half. Uh, we then need to load the X register into the accumulator again and and the other part. We only want to look at the last four digits this time. Because they're already in the right place, we don't need to do any of the rotating. So we haven't got the rotating this time. Uh, but it's just the same code. This is why it's very inefficient. It needs to go in a subroutine somewhere. Um, we do exactly the same. We compare it with the number 10. Uh, if it's less than 10, uh, we're going to add the offset for numbers. Uh, otherwise, we're going to add the offset for letters uh, and then print it. And it does the same again then to do the content of the byte as well to print the uh, hex numbers so very very inefficient code but it does seem to work uh, i've got a huge amount to learn something weird is going on with the x register i've had all sorts of weird things i've had to put that code in again at the beginning of the program to and i don't know why it wasn't working properly there was a weird offset going with the x register For some reason if i just copy and pasted that code in and ran it again before doing the interrupt it just suddenly started working i have no idea why there's something weird going on that i need to get to the bottom of but anyway quite a nice um quite a nice little practical start i've got a program where i can step through um step through memory uh view the address in hex on the screen view the contents of that memory location in hex on an lcd screen and also view an ascii representation of the content which is a bit like uh, looking at looking at a hex dump, but just doing it one character at a time.